you come to Davos and you talk about inequality, does it sort of leave an odd taste in the mouth? Well, it is a little bit odd. Uh, you were discussing that Oxfam report. What you didn't mention was that size of the bus that is equal to half the world's wealth keeps getting smaller and smaller. Uh, I think when they first started reporting, uh, it was about a bus a little smaller than 90, and now it's down to uh, a little It'll under It'll be a 70. mini bus soon. Uh, exactly. So with this in mind, what can we do? Because there doesn't seem to be... A tick uh, you see the market volatility, you see the issues that we're dealing with, but there doesn't seem to be an easy or obvious solution to readdress that. There's no magic bullet, but one of the things I've been convinced, and I've been writing in the, uh, a recent book of my called Rewriting the Rules, that one of the real reasons for the increase in inequality, especially in the United States, has been the rewriting the rules of the last third of a century that have advantaged those who are already advantaged, those at the top 1%, right. at the expense of the bottom 99%. And let's stay with the United States for a moment. I mean, the latest polls suggest Donald Trump gets the Republican nomination, or at least wins Iowa. Bernie Sanders wins uh, Iowa. That will... That's a, that's a, a sort of an electoral lands um, upset, isn't it? Yeah, and it's reflecting... What? The, 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 what's what they're reflecting? A high degree of discontent in the country, reflecting the data that I've been looking at. Uh, you know, the median household, you know, half above, half below, Income today is lower than it was a quarter century ago. Medium income of a full-time male worker is lower than it was 40 years ago. Real wages at the bottom are lower than 60 years ago. The American economy has not been delivering for a very large fraction of the population, very well for the people here in Davos, but not for a majority of Americans. Right, and I, I, although you're, 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 you're an economist, but you're also a political watcher as well, and you put the two things together, if we do get to a situation where it is a Donald Trump versus a Sanders, or even a, even a Ted Cruz versus a Clint, Hillary Clinton, we are looking at an environment politically and economically like none other we've seen. Would you agree? I think that's right. I think it's a fundamental change from... and and. It's reflecting a discontent. You know, I think the question is, how do we channel that discontent in a constructive way? And I think the Democrats are working very hard to put forward a progressive agenda that converts that into a positive, long-term economic strategy that will achieve shared prosperity. Quick worry wall for you, Professor. Where are you? Choose your colour and where are you? We're all going for blue today. <laughs> OK. Where are well, you? Oh, you're going to go for red. <laughs> how worried are you about what's happening? Uh, right over to number nine.